Hi, Credo family. My name is Alan Harrell, and I play the cello in the Cleveland Orchestra. And today, what I'm going to be doing is talking about two seemingly very different things, rhythm and Thanksgiving. Now, first, I want to talk about rhythm. We all know what rhythm is as musicians, don't we? Rhythm is the pulse of the music. It's the heartbeat of the music. And it doesn't matter what we're playing. It could be Bach. It could be Beethoven. It could even be Bruno Mars. Everything that we play has to have a strong pulse, and it's our job as musicians to make sure that happens. Now, how do we, how do, we do that? Well, one of the best and easiest ways that I know of is to practice with the metronome. You see, a metronome isn't something you outgrow whenever you are a professional. Metronome is something that I use all the time. Recently, I was playing the Bach first prelude, um, and I hadn't played it for a while. And what I did was I slowed the metronome down to about half tempo. This is eight note equals 80. Let me sort of show you what it sounds like. play the, the whole thing for you because it would take the entire devotion. But when I'm, I'm going that slowly, I'm able to think about all the intonation. I'm trying to make each note perfect. I'm trying to work on the voicing of the chord, the bow stroke. When I go that slowly, I can slow my brain down. I can slow my fingers down and really concentrate on every note. Now, once I've done that, I might speed it up a little bit, speed it up a little bit more until I'm about you know, a middle tempo, I'm going to say about eighth note equals 120, and I'll play a little bit of that for you now. Again, I'm not quite tempo, but I'm still slow enough so I'm able to concentrate on the small details. And then finally, once I've done that, I can do it um, at a uh, tempo that's closer to normal. I'm going to put it at eighth note equals 100 and um, we'll say 150. And so now I'm more at tempo. It's going to sound like this. play it like a robot. I'm not going to play it exactly like that metronome, but practicing it this way puts that rhythm into the music in a way that nothing else can. Actually, when I, when I hear students <clears throat> or when I listen to auditions, sometimes what I, I can tell if someone has practiced with the metronome or not, it's very clear. Rhythm is one of the most important things, and if you practice that way, no matter what is going on around you, you're going to be able to play with great rhythm. So what I'm going to do right now <clears throat> is I'm going to play um, that Bach prelude again. And while it's going, I'm going to be playing, uh, there's going to be another song playing in the background. You can go ahead and start that. I said Bruno Mars earlier, and I sort of did that on, for a reason, because I recently recorded um, Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars. Let's take a listen. Now, because I recorded it, I know that the metronome when I recorded it was exactly 115. So what I'm going to try to do right now is to play that Bach prelude while this is going on in the background. 150 versus 115. Here we go. successful I was with that, but when we practice that way, rhythm gets instilled in the music. Rhythm is one of the most important things a musician can learn. What does any of this have to do with Thanksgiving? Well, just as great musicians have to have a strong pulse in the music they play, so too Christians are to be characterized by a spirit of Thanksgiving. In Colossians 3:16, Paul writes, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, 
teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, I have to admit, sometimes, a lot of times, I don't have that spirit of thankfulness in my life. You turn on the TV and it's easy to, to, to be, uh, have apathy, to complain, to have a spirit of bitterness. But as Christians, we're told to be thankful people. And when we do, we're going to stick out in our orchestra, in our school, in our community, in the best possible way. We as Christians should be characterized by a spirit of thankfulness. Secondly, just as rhythm is something you can learn, you know, I practiced with the metronome to instill that rhythm into the music that I was playing, so too, thankfulness is something God can teach us. In the Psalm, this is Psalm 119, and, uh, 36 and 37, David writes, Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. Now, David didn't specifically mention Thanksgiving there, but he's asking God to give that Holy Spirit to change him. And one of the ways that God changes us is to give us that spirit of thankfulness. Number two, we can remember what God has done. There's so many instances of this in the Bible. Um, God gave um, the Israelites the Passover so they would remember how they got out of Egypt. When Joshua brought the, the people over across the Jordan River, God instructed them to put these memorial stones so that they would remember that day. Jesus, too, gave us the communion. Do this in remembrance of me, he said. So we can look at the Bible and we can see what God has done. We can look and see what God has done in our own lives. Look back at what God has done in the past and we're able to be more thankful to have more faith about what's going to happen in the future. Remembering can give us that spirit of thankfulness. And lastly, we can memorize scripture. You know, when we memorize music, we learn it in a way that's um, more complete. We're able to stop looking at the music on, a, on the stand to look at the page but we're able to just get into the music to express the message that we're trying to convey. In the same way, when we memorize God's word, it seeps into our lives in a way that nothing else can. So even if we don't have a, a Bible in front of us, we're able to remember and, and concentrate on God's promises. It gives us that spirit of thankfulness. Now, when we do all of these things, when we learn how to be thankful, when God teaches us how to be thankful, we are going to have the ability to be thankful in all circumstances. Just as I was playing that, that Bach while Bruno Mars was playing in the background, so too we can be thankful in all circumstances. In Thessalonians, we hear these words. This is 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and and this is the, the verse that I want you to remember. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you, to give thanks in all circumstances. Now, that was a very important verse for a woman named Corrie Ten Boon. She lived in Amsterdam during World War II, and her family gave refuge to Jewish people. They gave them a hiding place, and the book that she wrote afterwards is called The Hiding Place. I can't recommend it enough. But I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. They were captured um, by the, the Nazis. The Nazis found out what they were doing, and Corey and her sister, Betsy, were sent to a concentration camp. And it was in that concentration camp, Ravensbrück Concentration Camp, that Betsy, Corey's sister, told her to make a list of all the things that they could be thankful for. Now, I can't imagine giving thanks in a situation like this, but that's what they were called as Christians to do. And one of the uh, things that they came up with was they were thankful for being together. They were actually crammed together in an incredibly packed barrack with, with hundreds of other uh, ladies. And it was inhumane that the way that they were um, housed together. But they were able to give thanks that they were together. The sisters were together. Secondly, they had a Bible. It's an amazing story how they got the Bible past the guards. You'll have to check it out. Um, but finally, um, and I'm going to read the passage um, from the book for you. Um, Betsy gave thanks for and I'll just read it to you. It says, thank you, Betsy, continues serenely, for the fleas and for the, you see, their bed was swarming with biting fleas. Now, this was too much for Corey. 
She cut in on her sister, Betsy, there is no way even God can make me grateful for a flea. Give thanks in all circumstances, Betsy corrected. It doesn't say in pleasant circumstances. Fleas are part of the place where God has put us. So they stood between the stacks of bunks and gave thanks for fleas, though on that occasion, Corey was sure that Betsy was wrong. I'm going to fast forward a little bit in the story. One evening, evening when Corey arrived back at the barracks, Betsy's eyes were twinkling. You are looking extraordinarily pleased with yourself, Corey told her. And this is Betsy answering. You know, we've never understood why we had so much freedom in this big room. Well, I just found out. This afternoon, there was confusion in my knitting group about sock sizes, so we asked the supervisor to come and settle it. But she wouldn't. She wouldn't step through the door of the barracks, and neither would the guards. And do you know why? Betsy couldn't keep the triumph from her voice as she exclaimed, because of the fleas. That's what she said. This place is crawling with fleas. So because of the fleas, they were able to actually read the Bible that they brought through. They were actually able to have a Bible study with the other ladies, something that was almost impossible in this circumstance. They were able to give thanks, and because of that, God showed them the reason. Difficult year for almost everyone. But as Christians, it's our job to be thankful. Now, we didn't live in a concentration camp, but it's been a tough year. So what I want each of you to do is write a list of things that you're thankful for about 2020. And if you, if you have the time, put it in the chat of this, of this video. I want to hear what you're thankful for. Thank you so much for letting me talk um, today about Rhythm and Thanksgiving. Looking forward to seeing you again. Goodbye.